All right. Now we're going to start a new lesson, Linear Color Space Workflow with Textures and Physical Sky. To summarize, I'm going to show how to use and fix the gamma of Physical Sky. And number two, how to verify that our textures are being color managed. So first thing that we do is we open up a file. This is something I got from TurboSquid, or say it's an old model from uh, demo times. It's a model of a warehouse, and it's going to show a little bit of indoor-outdoor lighting together. This model seems to be about three or four stories tall, and let's estimate the physical size. A story is, say, three meters, so we want to be between 10 and 12 meters on this thing. So it's very important that we look at it in the orthographic view and make sure it's got a fairly accurate size. I hate to harp on this kind of stuff, but it just has to be a decent size. 958 is what we got. So that is about 10 meters. Remember, it's a 100 centimeters is a meter, and my unit is a centimeter. That's kind of default stuff. I want you to set your things up the same way, and 10 meters tall seems fine. And I'm going to zoom in, get a decent looking render camera, and we're going to start rendering. The main reason we have to have the right physical size is to really have shadows and light work correctly. Shadow blurring or shadow um, softness changes according to distance. So if you're working in a miniature world, you will not get accurate shadow blurring. So that's like a big reason I want to always fix this stuff. Okay, so let me delete some of these old files here. And is what we're going to do is we're going to start with a quick render of the default renderer, which uh, is Mental Ray. It's just going to bring in the model and render. And there he is. Uh, we notice it was very fast because it's using the default light. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our render globals, and we're going to say, stop using the default light. This thing is a little bit dangerous. We turn that off. How are we going to light the scene? We're going to use an HDR image under it and direct lighting. And the particular image we're going to use is more of a procedural. It's called physical sun and sky. This is a, a mental ray thing. As soon as you turn it on, it makes a sun, it makes a sky dome, and it makes sort of a, a horizon. And it also turns on final gather. I'm going to uh, save our first image and then hit render. So you will notice now, as we begin rendering, it is a little bit slow. Uh, the defaults for Final Gather are a little bit too slow to test, and they're not quite accurate enough for final renders. It's really right in the middle. So our most important variable is point density. Uh, final Gather takes all the surfaces of your world and puts a Final Gather point there, and from the point it sprays out a hundred little rays. So our point density of 1 is fairly high. If I want my render to go faster, you lower this number down quite a bit. We could say 0.1. You could say even 0.01. You'll get a less accurate lighting model, but it's not so bad that you can't evaluate things. So let's say I turn this down to 0.1, and I'm still, I'll just leave accuracy at 100, and point interpolation has almost no difference on the speed. And with that, I can hit Save. And instead of uh, 48 seconds to render, this should go in 10 seconds or so. It's using a tenth as many final gather points on your surfaces to begin shooting out rays. Okay, that's a reasonable looking thing. You can see uh, the difference. There's more final gather points, less final gather points. It's a difference in shading. We'll turn it up later when we finish up, okay? Now... This is a horrible looking render. What have I done? We're going to start with, why does Physical Sky look so washed out? You know it's something with color management. Uh, I have not turned color management on yet. And I'm wondering about my display. OK, that looks a little better. But that's saying my display color profile is linear, which we know it's not. My monitor is gamma of 2.2. So I always got to display it with sRGB, gamma 2.2. So we know that uh, I'm creating linear, I'm displaying sRGB, sort of like saying I'm displaying with a LUT. And we're still washed out. What is the problem? I'm gonna look at my camera, and is what happens is every time you use an automatic tool, I graph the camera, and I'm using an automatic tool 
physical sky, I see that it made a lens shader. It put a lens shader called Mia Exposure Simple, and this lens shader does a color correction on my image, on my render. This gamma of 2.2, I'm going to change that to 1, and I'm going to re-render. Now that is there for legacy reasons. Older color management solutions used to use the lens shader to solve some, uh, it's like putting a LUT on, which we now do in the color management tools. So we'll turn that thing off. It's no longer going to be used, and we'll just leave the gain, neat compression. Those are basically changing the curve from being a, um, a straight linear curve to a curve that has uh, softness on the two ends. This is a useful tool. There's even a better one called Mia Photographic. It has more variables, and it's what it is. It's color correcting your render in Maya. Good stuff, but we're not going to get into it right now. Okay, now we notice after we uh, have turned off that gamma, we turned off the gamma. It's looking a little more natural, but I definitely feel like the textures are still washed out. We're sure that they are because I haven't turned on color management yet. But let's take a little more look at the um, physical sky. I scale up my light. This sun direction comes with the physical sky. Let me graph that thing, and I see that physical sky is a little more than just a light now. It uses a light shader. The shader goes into the light, uh, and then it has this controller, which is the physical sky. So I control multiplier, which is just the gain, and that will control the intensity of my light shader. Then you can do color things like haze will soften everything up. Red and blue will make it cooler or warmer. You can have a saturation to the colors, a ground color. We're going to leave it pretty simple right now. I'm just going to change the direction of my light. I want my light to be lower in the sky as though it was sunset. And I want it to be streaming into the warehouse. So I look at the warehouse, I point it at the warehouse, and that basically puts the distant sky off in the distance. It brings the sun down to be closer to the ground. And now I'm going to see sun streaming into the warehouse, shining on the back wall, and getting some shadows on the ground. These shadows uh, have a little bit of softness. You can see the softness on the black wall. Those sorts of things are controlled in physical sky. All right, so now I know I have the sun streaming in. I want some direct sunlight so I can see, okay, what's going on with these textures? Textures, there it is with indirect light. That's basically the sky dome lighting the stuff. Here it is with direct light. That is what my texture should look like. Um, what should my texture look like? Let me pick a piece of geometry, and I graph that piece of geometry, and I pick the texture. It's called Gate Rusty C, and I say view it. That's pretty much what it should look like. I want to see something darker and more solid like that. Uh, that is definitely washed out. I go to my controls, and I'm going to turn on color management. It's in the common area. I say enable color management. Not only will I do that, but I'll set myself up with an EXR and also make sure that I'm in 32-bit float. These are the same steps I'm going to do for every lesson because it's the same things that we need to do every time we start a new file or begin any new rendering. Okay, I have now told it to begin color management on all textures. It basically puts a gamma in all SG, sRGB incoming textures, gammas them at 0.45 so that they have a more accurate result. Okay, now these textures look much more like the texture as it exists out here, and I'm pleased to see that. Let's do a little further testing and put in some spheres. I'd like a chrome sphere, and I would like a matte gray sphere. And uh, these kind of things are how I troubleshoot and evaluate a scene very often. So I'll put a nice big sphere there, and then I'll duplicate that thing. And I'll have another one that is used for Chrome. OK, let's go ahead and make some shaders. I'm going to say, make me a MIA shader. OK, shaders. The thing that goes along with this new color management stuff is shaders. Shaders really, the old Maya shaders, it's not that they're broken. They're not as accurate. 
as say uh, Mia Material X. These are great shaders. I'm going to make two of these things. They're great because they have presets. That's pretty darn convenient. I can say you should be chrome and you should be a gray matte finish. Not only that, they have energy conservation. That means as much light shines at them and hits them, the same amounts of light will reflect back. You can never get a fake amount of light coming off of these shaders. Whereas older Fong and Blinn, you can actually uh, have fake response, mainly because they have specular. These things do not have specular. They ha you know, specular doesn't actually exist. It's what it is. It's reflection. Um, now that we're doing indirect lighting for our stuff, we don't need that fake little thing of specular. Okay, I've made a gray sphere and I've made a chrome ball. This will get me two things. The chrome ball is going to allow me to see the rest of my sky so I can see, okay, I've got a big sun there on the horizon. I can see that I have a blue sky and I can uh, basically evaluate what my surrounding area is. And then this guy is gray. One issue when you start using solid colors uh, everything else I have has a texture, but here I've done a solid color. All of these textures are color managed. They have a gamma. But the fact of the matter is, color swatches need the same gamma. I'm going to bring up the manual, and it states clearly here, color swatches are not color managed. To maintain a linear workflow, single color swatches and shaders, procedurals, utility nodes, and light colors should be converted to a linear color. That means put on a gamma of 0.45. That's a real bummer. That's like some people really refuse to use the color management tools because of this. I don't blame them. I think it's uh, kind of a pain, but I'm going to do it because I would rather just stick to all the rules. The way you do it is you put on a ramp. You tell this ramp to be the exact same color that you wanted before, 50% gray. And then you say, okay, there it is. There's my ramp. And then I say, I need to put a gamma between there. So I go in here, type gamma, find my gamma swatch. Okay, ramp color goes into value. I delete the old connection. And then my gamma goes into color. And I tell my gamma value to be 0.45. Now, when I turned on color management earlier, that happened automatically, but it doesn't work for procedurals and swatches of plain old color. Uh, one other thing you should note, if my color was not gray, but rather it was black or it was white or it was solid red, you don't actually need to do this gamma. Even notice the shape of a gamma thing, a gamma curve, linear, and gamma corrected are the same at the two ends, 0 and 1. But they are really, the effect of gamma happens in the middle. It's something to keep in mind when you're using solid colors and making the gamma corrections. Okay, so I hit save and go. I'm going to do one other thing here. When I render, I'm going to hit save, and I want to look at this render in another piece of software, just to verify a couple of things. I want to verify that I'm working in 32-bit, that I'm getting the sun. There I have a nice accurate gray, which is MIA. So I hit save right here. And where that saves is in a temp directory. And saving a file like that is not the same as doing save image right here. Save image right here will only give you an 8-bit. And it will not be floating. It'll be linear. You don't want to save image and then bring it over. I want to look at the thing in Nuke. So I pop up Nuke. And I say, read, go find in images, temp, and basically, it'll be the last thing that was saved. It's an EXR. I hit open, and I say, let's view that thing. Very good. Is what I want to do is compare this to my texture. I just want to see, okay, my textures look one way. My final images look another way. I remember that thing was uh, Rusty C, open. I hit 2. And you know what? This thing is a little bit warm because my sun. But they're basically, they're in the same color space. And I feel like I am on the right track. 
Another thing that's a good sign is the reflection of my sun has an intensity. You can see the RGB numbers right down there, a larger than one. So clearly, I'm in a linear color workspace, and I'm using floaty point values. So my output is good, my input is good, and that's something I'm going to pay attention to each step of the way as I work on these things. Uh, one other thing to keep in mind, if I go to my output of color management, display color profile, linear RGB, that's what we're actually rendering, but I put a LUT on the thing in view, a LUT to change it. It's my display color profile. I'm looking at a computer monitor, so the computer monitor is always sRGB, so I've got to have this thing set. That's what I'm looking at. Nuke does the exact same thing. Nuke LUT is right up here. You either say none or sRGB. And that would be, and I shouldn't be calling that a LUT, it's a gamma correction, but that is the same little tool Maya just didn't have that ability in the past. Now, for 2011 and 2012, it does. Okay, that brings us uh, to the end of Physical Sky as an HDR. Next, we're going to do the same sort of exercise with uh, real HDR images. But in conclusion, I just want you to realize how Physical Sky works. Always watch for uh, extra hidden gammas and verify that your textures are being gamma corrected. All right.